Hi, my name is Josie and I'm secretary of RBC SOS. I'm gonna to talk to you about mental resilience. Mental resilience is when we test our brain. We do puzzles, we play board games, we try new hobbies, read new books, stay engaged at work. Heck, we might even grow a garden. Overall, mental resilience focuses on continuously challenging the mind. Welcome to a special edition of the Everything RVC podcast. I am David Costello and joined, as always, by Amanda Keeper. Hi, Amanda. Hello. So we have a special episode today. By special, I mean we are very thrilled and honored to be joined by the second president in RVC's history. He was in that role from 1969 to 1997. So nearly 30 years. There's a building on campus named after him. Mm -hmm. So we are so excited to be able to welcome Dr. Carl Jacobs. Carl, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. So we are just so excited to dive into RVC's history today. Uh, I can't wait to hear some of these stories. If you would, could we travel back in time to 1968? So you were your vice president in Flint. Michigan yes, I was Community executive College. vice president at what is now called Charles Mott College. Okay. Okay. Um, so RBC at that time was just a few years old, uh, founded in 64, got underway in 65. So what was it about Rock Valley College and Rockford, Illinois, that appealed to you, and what opportunity did you see here? Well, I have to admit that I uh, took a vow that the one community I would never go to would be Flint, Michigan. <laughs> And I was offered a position there and took it. Uh, it, it was a mature college and a, a very well-to-do college. And uh, I learned a great deal from that experience. I was a faculty member, a head of a division at Henry Ford Community College. I was a person who never really intended to uh, uh, go into education. I was with Ford uh, Motor Company, Ford International in Durban, where we lived. And uh, community colleges uh, were really quite un unfamiliar to me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I took a part-time, that a full-time job at the college, and I really learned to appreciate the importance of that level of uh, higher education, mm -hmm. uh, serving both community and students. So what was it when you when you looked at the the opening? You saw okay, there's this college in, in Rockford, Illinois, that has an opening. What what made you want to come here? Uh, I I wanted to be in a community that was not encumbered by or overshadowed by a, a huge prestigious senior institution. Uh, no matter how good of, of a job you did, it was never quite recognized because it was overshadowed by a huge institution uh, and uh, living in the Detroit area all my life, born in Detroit and uh, Dearborn where we moved, uh, we were always overshadowed by a senior institution that was very prestigious and large. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want a community where you, s it's sort of basic and you had a chance to demonstrate to a community the value of a community college. Mm. So we were walking into the podcast room and you called yourself an old relic. That's me. You mm. called yourself an old relic. I, I thought that was a, a fond word to use. Um, I think, using your word, I think that old relics have so much to teach people. What do you see as some of the most needed skills, talents, um, you know, what do people need today? What, what do you see as the college needing to focus on? Not, not, I'm not asking you to give me like a grand vision, but where are the big gaps right now? One thing is I think the leadership at whatever level mm -hmm. has to learn, and maybe they do, to be good listeners. Mm -hmm. um, if I was teaching a speech class, uh, I would be probably less interested in the uh, techniques of speaking. Certainly it's important. But I would try to teach listening skills. Do you really listen to what's said? I think yeah. that perspective of That's interesting. Yeah. listening is a takeaway right now in our culture yeah. uh, that, that everybody 
uh, should try to adhere to. There's there's a lot of talking and not as much listening right now with all the differences and all the stuff going on in our world. So yeah. you're you're still highly regarded around here and and always will be. Yeah, um, in 2011, actually we celebrated yeah, that. We with built the, a, a building. Yes. And, Yes. And named it in your honor. Uh, mm -hmm. well, I, I just got something in the mail for they want twenty eight million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they said he's either dead or he's rich. <laughs> dead or rich. Uh, well, so so yeah. the poker group said, "By God, you got that building named after you. Not dead, and we know you're not rich." I know, but I'm giving it back somewhere. So there was a catch. I see that it. it wasn't just named for you. There was a catch. There was an invoice. Sent. There was an invoice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, Seriously yeah. though, what what did that mean to you when they reached out to you and said we're going to name a building after you and your name's going to be enshrined here forever? Uh, I, I really couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, I, I I say this honestly. I just sort of feel in a sense. I wish there was a place where a lot of other names were on the building mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. uh, down below or below next to me or wherever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I didn't do this all by myself. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, and frankly, the, there were people doing things in this institution that I would have never thought of, of, being, of doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness I had the sense to listen to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know there's, you, know, you were here for so long and there's so many things, but when you packed up your office for the last time and you were about to walk out of here, what were some of the things that you felt like you were most proud of accomplishing here? I think I was pr most proud of the people. I kept thinking of all those people who risked their families, moving their houses here uh, to an untried institution, an institution that was not embraced uh, warmly by many elements in the community, mm -hmm. who stuck with it, uh, made their contribution, uh, many of them personal friends. Some of my colleagues in other institutions said, it's not a wise idea to be friends with faculty. You know, they thought, you know, I said, well, I've been in the military. I didn't care for the ranking system there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I said, I don't see why there has to be a conflict. Yeah, some people try to influence you, but if, that's normal. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I still play in a faculty administration poker group for the last 50 years. <laughs> wow. Nice. Mark Cohen and, and okay. Bob Conboy mm -hmm. and uh, Steve B. And wow. These are all personal friends. Yeah. Nice. What, what do you play? What game? Did you say what kind of, is it Texas Hold'em? It's Hold the game or? of how much I can contribute to their well-being. <laughs> So, so I've, wel I've welcomed every time. So you used to sign their checks, and now you're still giving them money. Right, right. Yeah. No, we, awesome. we play a lot of different kinds of games. Okay. And, uh, uh, it's, it's a big stakes game. You can't, uh, you have to put in $15, and you can't lose any more. There you go. I'll tell you, we fight over those quarters like they were right. a, a Hollywood movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's not money at that point. It's a trophy. Okay. I, I, I love that your answer to that question was the people, though. After yes. 28 years, it was the people. Yes. Because that, the people that you miss. We hear yeah. that over and over again from anybody who leaves right. here, even if they were here five years, and we say, well, what do you miss about Rock Valley? The people. Yeah. What are you going to miss? The people. The people. Always the yes. people. So on this podcast, we have some random questions that people draw out of the bag. So mm -hmm. I'm going to have you just draw one. Just one question. Does it bite? Does it bite? <laughs> nope. Does no, bite. No, tr no tricks here. Just treats. If you could choose one book as a mandatory read for all college students, which book wow. would you choose? That's a great one for you. Um, that has lost the name. Okay. Uh, I would take uh, a book that has been on the bestseller list uh, by uh, Abigail Wilkerson called Cast. Uh, her, her thesis is that it's not race that divides America. Uh, it's really caste. Mm. And she lays out uh, a very controversial thesis on this. This book is, I think, a must read. Okay. Um, because America is changing. Um, it's not a question of whether you want to see America change or not, it is changing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, if you don't believe how it's changed, even now, Look at old movies on Turner Classic and look for people who are marginalized 
and you will find them as a backdrop, but not the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, they're the ones that are either made ridiculous, uh, undereducated, believing stupid stuff, uh, or can, or doing menial things that other people uh, won't do, or they're not able by their talents to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's I found good. my next read. Oh, yeah, that's good. I think yeah. maybe we could bring that to Rock Valley College for our yearly book club. Yeah, yeah, great idea. Well, Dr. Jacobs, we Thank you. we are thrilled that you were able to come today. We sincerely appreciate uh, the history lesson and wa walking us through. <laughs> mm -hmm. I forgot a lot of things. Thank you so much for everybody who made RVC SOS's virtual event, second annual Friendsgiving, a smashing success. To the people that put videos together for us, to the students, to the co-advisors, to Jerry Labai and his team, we are so grateful. Please help us. Be, Be the light. light.